We've been real excited about tonight, and uh, we've invited a very special guest to come out, Joseph Botarenko. And uh, yeah, go ahead and clap, yeah. And Joseph, in a real sense, is a hero of the faith. You know, when we read in Hebrews in uh, chapter 11, the hall of faith, and you read about by faith, uh, Enoch did this, or by faith, Sarah did this, or by faith, Noah or Abraham um, basically lived for Christ and lived for God. And Joseph, by faith, lived as a Christian in a very difficult situation. And uh, we're going to hear his story tonight. But, you know, as we've been going through the book of Acts as valor and virtue, you know, we've been looking at how God has worked in the lives of men and women who were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we've been studying. That's what we've been looking at. And, you know, when Jesus, before he ascended, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the promise, right? And that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them to be what? Witnesses. Witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the other, othermost parts of the earth. And what we've been looking at is men and women like James and John and Peter, of course, guys that went out and preached the gospel, but many who lost their lives. Of course, Stephen and James. And then last week, we looked at Paul, who was stoned probably to death, but was stoned and um, the Lord raised him up. But we've been seeing this radical Christian faith as men and women live for Christ in, in great difficulties. And whenever God says he's going to rise up and build and do a work, the enemy says, I'm going to rise up and try and destroy. And what we're seeing in the book of Acts is the gospel going out, people getting saved, lives being changed, cities being changed, even states being changed. And of course, we see that as we look back at our faith, how that's impacted our faith and how many of us are part of that. But what we see in Joseph's life, which is so impressive, and he's going to share this with you in just a moment, how God took a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit to go into a very difficult place and preach the gospel. And even when they said, shut up, he said, no, I have to obey the Lord. I have to preach the gospel. And he walked in the power of God's Spirit, not only his witness and his testimony, but with his family and with his community and in his church too. And so this is what we're going to hear about tonight, Joseph's testimony, how God has worked not only in him, but through him. So would you welcome Joseph Botarenko? And this is his daughter, one of his daughters, Vera. And uh, Vera and Marie and their husbands also fellowship here at Harvest in Orange County. And Vera is going to translate. And so this is going to be exciting. So let's just pray. Can we pray for you guys right now? Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would minister to our hearts through Joseph's story tonight. The story that you wrote, Lord. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. So tonight we just want to commit this time to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Good the Lord. evening. How are you? I, th I think you all understood, so I think maybe he doesn't need my help, actually. Очень благодарен пастору Грегу, пастору Майклу, что они пригласили нас. I am very delightful uh, to be with you, and I'm so grateful to Pastor Greg and Pastor Mike for a kind invitation for me to be with you here tonight. It's 
I'm very delighted to be with you all today, and it's a pleasure for me to be in the church where my children go to, Vera and Mary, and uh, my son-in-law Vitaly, most of you know him, and also uh, Dennis, my husband. Очень благодарен, что вы их любите, и они любят церковь. And I'm grateful that you all love my family, love my children, and they love the church. Друзья, которые любят моих детей, это мои друзья. Uh, friends that love my children are my friends. Церковь, которая любит моих детей. The church that loves my kids. Церковь, которая любит моих детей, это моя церковь. This is my church. Я очень радый сегодня, что сегодня со мной также мой сын Даниил, а также и зять Тимати и моя возлюбленная жена Мария. I am so happy today that my only son Daniel is here with us today. Uh, Daniel, you can stand up. And also uh, my other um, son-in-law, Timothy. And most importantly, tonight with me, my beautiful wife, Maria. То есть я подтянул весь свой тыл на передовую. And my family came to support me. It's like to be in the front line, as they always been. Приятно, что очень много сегодня мужчин я вижу здесь. I'm delighted to see so many men tonight. Но очень бы было грустно, если бы не было здесь. But probably it would be a little bit too boring had we not have many wonderful women among us today. <laughs> God bless you, women. I will be speaking and my daughter will be translating for you. And to be honest with you, I really feel for you guys. Что буду говорить с переводом, потому что кто-то сказал, слушать с переводом это значит кушать суп вилкой. It's uh, like um, somebody once said that um, listening to someone through a translator, it's like eating a soup with a fork. Но я верю, что Вера будет моя дочь переводить замечательно. Потому что она умеет не только варить суп, но она прекрасная кулинар на кухне. Um, I just believe that Vera is going to do a good job tonight. And uh, not only uh, will she do that, but she also cooks pretty delicious soups. Thank you, Daddy. Я очень благодарен музыкантам, И как вы поете, поистине эта музыка и пение, она вызывает от смерти в жизнь, от сна к пробуждению, к бодрствованию. And I am so lifted up in my spirit with the songs that we sing tonight. How these songs just bring life and breathe life to us from death to life. Я сегодня поделюсь с вами некоторыми фрагментами из моей страдальческой жизни во имя Иисуса Христа. I will share with you just briefly a little of my story, of my persecution, and what God has allowed me to go through. Хочу засвидетельствовать убедительно, как при помощи Господа только я мог устоять на этой огненной тропе, по которой провел меня Господь. And I am a witness tonight before all of you that only by the power of my God was I able to go through those fiery roads. I am 70 years, 78 years old. I already said that my wife is Maria. Также мы 45 лет живем вместе у нас. 
детей, а, мы уже И приятно родился недавно внук, который тоже Иосиф Данилович, очень маленький. And uh, I am so delighted that uh, we just recently had our first grandson, and his name is Joseph, and his middle name is as mine uh, after Daniel. Я живу и служу Господу в Санта Барбаре. I reside with my family in Santa Barbara, and I minister in a local church. Пастором евангелистом являюсь уже служу Господу 50 лет. I've been as uh, ministering as an evangelist and a pastor of about 50 years. Был одним из первых руководителей подпольной церкви. And the Lord allowed me to be among first pioneers of the underground evangelical church in the former Soviet Union. Жил и нес служение во многих городах бывшего союза. And I lived and ministered in many cities in the huge territory of the former Soviet Union. Организовал с помощью Божьей более чем десяти новых церквей в Сибири. The Lord called me to organize and plant new churches in Siberia, over about ten churches. Период перестройки организовывал и проводил большие евангелиционные собрания на многих стадионах страны. And during uh, Perestroika, when uh, freedom came to our country, I uh, pioneered with this huge and massive evangelistic crusade throughout the former Soviet Union. Эти собрания я проводил вместе с Билли Греймом, Луис Палау. And all of those massive crusades I was able to be a part of with um, our dear friend Billy Graham and evangelist Louis Palau. Американскими астронавтами Джимми Ирвин, Чарльз Дюк, а также и с моим другом и братом, мучеником и героем веры, Ричардом Вурбрантом. And also um, I invited two American astronauts, uh, Charles Duke, and Jim Irvin, who are Christians, to witness for Christ on stadiums. And uh, they came over and we did those crusades together. And also with a dear friend of mine, um, some of you might know him, uh, um, prisoner for Christ, Romanian pastor, Richard Wurbrand. He's with the Lord now. Не выпала прекрасная привилегия страдать за веру в Иисуса Христа, испытать в бывшем Советском Союзе и пережить весь этот режим с его прелестями гонений и страданий. I have been privileged by my Lord to suffer for his name and to go through all of the persecution and oppression in the Soviet Russia and survive by his grace. И слава Богу, мы Увидели перестройку и свободу, о которых молился весь мир за нас, в том числе и вы, дорогие. Спасибо вам, слава Богу за это. And I am grateful that I happened to live to this moment to see the freedom that came to our country that we prayed for for so long. And along with us, there were so many believers around the globe that prayed for it, including yourself sitting here in this hall for which I am eternally grateful. And today, I am as a free man, live in a free country. являюсь гражданином Америки и это чудо это невообразимо And today not only do I live in a free country I am a citizen of the United States of America it's a miracle Я родился в Украине и в семье, где нас было 10 детей, я был девятым. Uh, let us go back a little bit. And I was born and grew up in Ukraine uh, in a family of 10 children, and I am number nine. Отец был пастором небольшой церкви в селе. My father was a pastor of a little evangelical church in our village. 
Родители были глубоко верующими людьми. Они привели мне любовь к Слову Божьему, к молитве. And my parents were devout Christians and uh, taught me to love God and to love His Word. У нас была одна единственная Библия, и я всегда старался как-то незаметно его взять ее, убежать в лес или на чердак и читать, читать с упоением читать. Ее. At that at that time when I was a young boy, about ten years old, we had only one Bible in our home, and what I would do, I would just take that Bible from my dad and would run to the forest or elsewhere just to study God's word, to be one or one with the word of God. Я старался много мест и глав заучать на наизусть и ох как мне это пригодилось в жизни and i was reading and studying and studying by heart passages and chapters of the scriptures and looking back how much i needed that word of god in my heart to be planted there я знал о том что будут предстоять мне в юности уже страдания и надо этот иметь духовный запас в своем сердце because the lord and the spirit knew already what i was about to suffer and he was preparing me giving me that passion and desire for god's word to have and put it in my heart 17 лет я посвятил свою жизнь Господу. At the age of 17, I committed my life to Christ. Время было очень тревожным, и верить Бога – это было величайшим преступлением, нарушением закона. And at that time, just to believe in God, at those turbulent times, to believe in God and read His Word was illegal. Это был период великих, или можно сказать, жестоких репрессий для всех конфессий. Это 70-летний период буквально коммунистического режима, когда жизнь ничего не стоила. At that time, it was a 70-year-old, a 70-year period of communism regime, and at that time, the life of a human being cost nothing and it was a just brutal uh, repressions for christians at the turbulent times атеистическая коммунистическая идеология она старалась искоренить веру в бога и самих верующих и заставляла под страхом поклоняться вождям Communist and atheistic ideology was pressing uh, people, and especially believers and just regular people, to worship not God but our leaders. Безбожная власть коммунистическая понимала такую идею, что светлое будущее можно построить только тогда, когда уничтожить церковь Божью. And Communist Party strongly believed that in order to build up a bright communist future, they were to exterminate first Christians and churches. Уже в 1963 году генеральный секретарь Хрущев сказал, что вот-вот скоро мы покажем последнюю верующую в России. In about 1963, uh, General Secretary of the Communist Party, uh, Mikhail Khrushchev, said that we will show pretty shortly the very last believer on national TV. Верующих называли врагами народа, американскими шпионами, обвиняли, что приносят жертву малолетних детей и кровь их льют у чаши в вечере для Christians were charged uh, that as enemies of the state and were demonized and portrayed as these who sacrifice children in church. And this is the lie they wanted people to believe and they would add this blood of the children, sacrificed children into the sacraments of the Lord's Supper. Just can you believe that? Biblia. Для атеистов буквально была динамитом. Ее забирали при обысках, ее сжигали, ее уничтожали и всю духовную литературу. Bible was like a dynamite for the atheists and communists, and they did everything possible in their power to uh, confiscate Bibles from our homes, from churches, and from our hearts. 
Понятно, что они хотели обезглавить все церкви, всех конфессий. И, как и написано, поражу пастыря и рассеются овцы. And the purpose and the strategy of the regime was to exterminate the leaders, the pastors of the churches. And as uh, it is said in the scriptures, that once they are gone, the flock will be spread. Молодежные пасторы, учителя воскресной школы, они садили их в первую очередь с желанием никогда с тюрем не выпускать братьев и сестер. Pastors, youth leaders, and um, church leaders, um, school teachers, both men and women were first in line to be imprisoned, tortured, and killed. Многие не возвратились на свободу. Многих мы не дождались. Они не пришли к своим семьям и детям. Тысячи были убиты. And thousands of people were killed. They never came home from prisons. They never saw freedom. Но несмотря на все это, церковь продолжала расти. And despite all of these oppressions, the church grew in numbers. Власть и КГБ требовали, чтобы молчали. Они требовали молчания и компромисса. Authorities and KGB demanded of Christians to go and compromise their faith and to be silent. Но ведь Бог послал нас But our God sent us Our God sent us and to fulfill his greatest command to witness and to talk about his precious name. Great commission. После окончания школы я в Одессе поступил в институт инженеров морского флота. As a young man, I uh, came to the city of Odessa in Ukraine, and I um, enrolled into the engineering university of the Navy. Since my childhood, I had a lot of passion for sea. I loved sea, and I wanted to be a ship captain. Поступил в институт, у меня много появилось друзей, которых я свидетельствовал о Господе, приглашал в собрания, в молодежные тайные кружки. And um, as soon as I got enrolled into the university, I loved people and I had lots of friends and students, and immediately I started talking about Christ, sharing my face with them. Это заметили агенты КГБ, и на пятом курсе при вручении, когда должны вручить диплом, меня вызвали в деканат. And um, after about um, into five years into my studies, just right next uh, or right before my graduation, um, I was called into the uh, president's office. Выбирай, или диплом будешь получать, или вера в Бога. And I was given an ultimatum. Ты you умей... have to choose between God or your diploma. Ты не умеешь молчать. You cannot be silent, and we warned you about that. Молчал бы, закончил бы университет и имел бы хорошую работу, карьеру в министерстве. And we told you that had you been silent, you would be all good, and you will have the best career possible, and you will have the best work in Moscow in the department, uh, depart, uh, department of Religion. Собрали две тысячи студентов. At, uh, I was given just one night to decide what I'm going to do. Перед and этим, next day, and they gave me just one night to decide. Вот собрании, and next day, I had to stand up before 2,000 students я and помолился, tell them my decision. Я помолился перед всей большой аудиторией. And when the morning came, it was a, a difficult night, but when the morning came, I stood up before, before these students. И сказал, я твердо принял решение. I prayed and I said, я I have decided веру Бога служить Ему. my faith in God and to serve Him. После этого я был исключен из института. 
And as I was promised, since I chose God and I could not deny Him, they expelled me from the university. And my dreams never came true. How on earth was it possible for me to betray my Lord, whom I loved from my youth, who saved me, who gave me life? I понимал, что верить это значит быть влюбленным в Иисуса Христа. And then I realized that to believe in Him is to be in love with Jesus. Это был поворотный момент моей жизни. And this was a turning point of my life. Это был окончательный выбор, который помог мне в дальнейшем моем служении. And it was a final choice that I made wholeheartedly, fully, that um, made the rest of my journey the way it did. And at that point, the Lord has given me a ministry to travel throughout the whole Soviet Union and to mobilize believers to stand up for Christ, not to be afraid of the truth and not to be afraid to preach the gospel despite the threats of the KGB. I was given this ministry to help people raise up Побуждать народ Божий, церковь Божью, не идти ни на какой компромисс. And encourage believers not to compromise in any way. И с властью, и своей личной совестью. Not to compromise with the authorities and with their personal conscience. Итак, в 1960 году, в этих годах, был вызов брошен церкви Божьей и каждому верующему. And in those years, in 1960s, the Church of Christ was challenged by the atheistic regime. Not only the church, but every believer personally. Надо было каждому отдельно и каждой церкви решать или молчать, идти на компромисс, или and every believer was faced with a challenge to compromise, to be silent, or to continue witnessing and praising the Lord. As you study the uh, book of Acts and we see chapter 4 where religious leaders of those days demanded of Apostle John and Peter to be silent and not talk about Jesus' name. И они смело сказали, так кого же нам слушать больше, Бога или вас? And then they say, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? Да, они высокую цену платили за свои божественные решения. And yes, they did pay a high price for their choice. В то время в нас КГБ и власти строго запрещали at that time, our leaders of our um, country uh, forbid children and youth to be a part of church services. Young people could not be attended to church services or to be baptized. And uh, those people that wanted to get baptized, the list of those people had to be approved by a um, religious affair um, department. 
и как обычно никого не пропускали крещение. And as a rule, of course, those lists were not approved. You can imagine. Они заставляли проповедовать проповедникам по конспектам, которые вырабатывали истины. Они открыто заявляли, что лучше бы вы были убийцами, чем вы являетесь христианами. So they had to approve the sermons first, and they boldly and repeatedly said that we would rather see you drug addicts, killers, but not believers. Невзирая на это, мы продолжали собираться по лесам, подвалах, в отдельных квартирах и разбирать, читать Слово Божье. And despite those threats, the church continued in faith and underground, studying the Word of God, getting together for worship in homes of the believers and elsewhere, in forest, wherever we possibly could, but we continued on. Мы переписывали Библии, стихи в свои блокнотики и потом заучали наизусть. We didn't have many Bibles. What we did, we started our small little notebooks and we would write passages from the scripture, each one of us, and then we would learn them by heart. За все три срока, только в двух сроках, когда я сидел по три года, я имел один листочек из Евангелия. I served three separate sentences, uh, totaling in almost ten years. But in those almost ten years, I had only three small pages of the scripture once in a while, here and there. И то, когда у меня нашли его, меня посадили на шесть месяцев в одиночную, холодную, темную камеру. And when they found it, I was thrown into a solitary confinement. Но невзирая на то, что нас штрафовали, нас арестовывали молодежь, but despite the fact that believers were fined for church services in home or small groups by uh, Bible studies, we had a great joy. А and why did we have that joy? Because we were united all together by the Spirit of God and we felt like a family together. And we believed that God was able to deliver us, able to protect us. А если бы не так говорили мы, как Даниил своими друзьями, то мы чужим богам никогда не поклонимся. And we would say along with Daniel and his Bible friends that but if he is not going to deliver us, we will not worship other gods. И так из-за того, что я отказался сотрудничать и выполнять инструкции КГБ, я был объявлен особо опасным преступником. So because I did not cooperate with the KGB and was not doing what they required of us as a church, I became a very criminal for the KGB. И вскоре меня арестовали и посадили на 8 лет. And an enemy of the state. And soon I was arrested and imprisoned for eight years. Когда мы выводили в зале меня после суда в наручниках, зал торжествовал, потому что были все комсомольцы, агенты. And after my trial, when I was led out of the courtroom, a lot of people were there gathered, and they were jumping with joy that such a criminal as myself was detained. Нас усилено охраняли. And I had uh, maximum security guards with me. Because people were about to torn me apart. 
Because the propaganda against believers was a such or a lie that we sacrificed children in church. People were scared, afraid, brainwashed. And those people that stood closer to me would approach and spit in my face. But I cannot explain that joy that I had in my heart. And if they mock and they torture me, Lord, it is because of you. That's my joy. Мне было 26 лет, когда я оказался в тюрьме, оказался в одиночной камере. I was 26 years old when I first encountered a prison cell. А затем перевели они более в общую камеру. And then it was a solitary confinement at first, and then I was transported into a common cell. Конечно, было страшно. Было жутко, и казалось, Господи, неужели вся моя юность пройдет в этом бетонном мешке? And at that time, it was frustrating, scary, and I thought to myself and prayed, Lord, would my whole life be buried behind those prison walls? Ведь атеисты говорили настойчиво, что живыми мы вас отсюда не выпустим. Because atheists and communists told me that you will not go out of this prison alive ever. Conditions of those prisons were horrifying. Prison guard felt joy beating me. As a young man, I was constantly hungry. I wanted to eat. And only um, every day I had a very small ration of bread, thin slice. When walking into the cafeteria, I had to hold my nose to avoid the wretched stench of rotting food. And it was so hard to eat that rotten, smelly food. For such a pizza that you ate today, you would have been killed in prison. Uh, to um, harm me physically, uh, people that had been infected with tuberculosis spit purposely into my food. But the most horrific thing was coming at night. And it was a real fight with bad bugs. You don't really know the Russian bad bugs. Your bad bugs, they bite you. Russian bed bugs, they drink your blood, <laughs> suck out of you. There were such a multitude or um, so, so many of them on the walls and ceilings that uh, prisoners, they tried to just smash them. So the whole walls around you were bloody. They had pretty, um, um, uh, pretty wonderful skills, uh, professional skills, I would say. They would go or climb on ceilings. And they, they would just drop to directly as paratroopers 
they would descend from ceilings to your face. And the favorite place that they bit or sucked blood out was your eyelid, because it's more delicious, I guess. And um, KGB would torture believers um, in freedom, but also they would uh, torture us in uh, prisons because they would brainwash those inmates and tell them how awful I was or those believers were. So when we uh, happened to be in, in a prison cell, that was a tough time for us. And when I prayed in that cell, and usually I did pray kneeling before the Lord, those inmates, those criminals would come and try to um, put cigars, put them out on my head. Но невзирая на все это, вера моя укреплялась в Господе благодаря Его чудесным обетованиям. And despite all of this, God was giving me faith, and my faith grew. Особо это Исаии 43 глава. And especially Isaiah 43. Не бойся, ибо я с тобою. Was encouraging verse to me. по имени твоему. Не бойся. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Do not be afraid. Если пойдешь долиной смертной тени, я с тобою. And then Psalmist says, if you go through the shadow of death, valley of death, do not be afraid, I'm with you. В особо трудные минуты жизни Бог давал особые утешения и особые подкрепления в нашем уповании. And in those very critical and hard moments of my life, God provided the special comfort and strength. Скажу вам, дорогие друзья, and I would love to tell you all, my dear friends, когда вы попадаете в безвыходное, тяжелое положение, when you find yourself in a very difficult circumstances, верьте, что для Бога нет безвыходных ситуаций, и что Бог вам поможет и вовремя придет на помощь. Верьте. Believe that God has all your answers, it's your an uh, questions answered, and he will come at that very moment and provide help for the time of need. Ведь же он сказал, я сегодня, вчера и во веки тот же. Because Jesus said that he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Хочу привести вам несколько примеров из тюремной жизни. If you would allow, I would love to share just a few more brief moments from my uh, prison life. Во-первых, третий уже срок, когда я сидел, девятый год, возможно было иметь у себя прятать Евангелие. When I served my third sentence, we had those little um, gospels that were printed specifically for those who were imprisoned, and we could have um, access to those. На свободе еще я участвовал в создании подпольной типографии. Uh, some years um, later, uh, earlier, I was one of the organizer of illegal press. И первое что издали ручным способом маленькое Евангелие для узников. And what we did first, we tried to print those little um, gospel, gospel of John or any other gospel for those in prison for Christ. Вот Евангелие от Марка. And so this is the Gospel of Mark that you see right now, and I can just have it in my palm. 
Вы потом, каждый, можете посмотреть ее. Она была в узах много лет. И Бог помогал ее прятать так, чтобы не находили. Это была пища, питье и воздух. Later you could come and see that little uh, gospel of Mark that I have that went through many prisons and I was able to hide it. To hide it to the way that they would never find it. Да, я не герой. Я не I'm not a hero. Человек. I'm not a special person. И в камере я имея страх And as a normal person, I had a lot of fear. And when I was trembling, I was praying to God. If in your provision, I would have to spend the rest of my life behind these bars. Let it be, but be with me, Lord. Ночью, когда я не спал, я увидел явление ангела. And one night, when I was, could not fall asleep, I как... saw a vision, an angel appeared. Камера вся осияла каким-то неземным светом. And at that time, my room, my cell, was lit by unbelievable light, bright. Посланник Божий был в неописуемой красоте. And this man that stood in front of me was shining. Было сказано только одна цифра три. And he said number three. Я соскочил со вторых нар быстро, чтобы хотя за руку дотронуться к ангелу. I jumped and I got out from bed just to touch this man and ask. Но таким же таинственным образом он исчез. But mysteriously as he appeared, he disappeared at that moment. Я стал размышлять. And I thought to myself, а что это значит? What is that? И здесь же Бог дает ясность. And then the Lord is just giving or speaking to my heart. Нет, не восемь лет ты будешь сидеть. Joseph, you will not be here for eight years. Это судьи определили. Judges gave you this sentence of eight years. Это их решение. This is their decision. Мое решение три года. But my decision is a sovereign decision that you will be here only for three years. И я это поверил. And I believe that. Три года – это детский срок. Oh, three years in comparison to eight, it's like for kids. Это не десять. <laughs> this is not ten. Заключенные говорят, этот срок можно простоять на одной ноге. And inmates would tell you that three years you can actually serve standing on one foot. <laughs> Это не 15 лет. This is not 15. Это не пожизненное. This is not a lifetime. С нетерпением ожидал, но и с радостью этих три года. I believe that the Lord gave me the uh, word and I was anticipating последний, what is going to happen. Последний год из восьми лет проходил в Луганской области, где сейчас в Украине жуткая война идет. And at that time I served my sentence in um, Luhansk region in Ukraine where we see uh, military um, happening right there as we speak. По счету Подошел этот третий год. And then a third year was approaching, and день, it came. День в день от того времени, когда явился мне ангел. I was counting days from that moment when angel appeared to me. Прошло уже 12 часов дня, когда обычно освобождают. And the day came, and usually a prisoner will be released by 12 o'clock noon. Все тихо. 12 o'clock comes. And everything is quiet. Заключённые говорят, мы же тебе говорили, ты же фанатик, у тебя эта крыша поехала. And my cellmates were mocking me and saying, we told you, you are insane, you are fanatic. Nothing like that is ever going to happen. Тебя ещё впереди 5 лет, будешь You have 5 years ahead of you. Смеяли. And they laughed. But for some reason, I had a joy in my heart. 
Смотрю, его в окошко маленькое, зарешоченное, постучали вот легенько, это три птички красивые. And at about that moment, in that small little prison cell, three birds came and knocked on this window. Я им говорю, видите, пришло сообщение с неба. And I tell my inmates, see, I have the messengers from heaven. Бог будет освобождать. God is going to release me today. And then an hour passed, and the second hour passed, quiet. In two hours, all of a sudden, the door opened. And the warden came in. And two um, officers with him. And joyously just pronounced. Заключенный Бондаренко, вы освобождаетесь. Inmate Bondarenko, you are released. Какая радость! Вы сейчас воздаете славу Богу, я так понимаю, когда вы рукоплещете. By clapping your hands, you are giving glory to God. А заключенные начали вы... Слава Богу. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. А заключенные... But my inmates... Видят, что это сбылось... Knowing that it passed to true to come... Стали подбрасывать меня на руках. And they started to lift me and lift me higher and higher. И повторять, есть Бог, есть Бог, есть Бог. And they were shouting... There is God, there is God, there is God. Я им говорю, это точно, что есть Бог. Я вам об этом говорил. Я в эту искреннюю верю. Только, пожалуйста, когда последний раз будете подбрасывать, не уроните меня на бетонный пол. I told you that, and I believed, and I told you that there is God, but when you are lifting me so high, just make sure that you don't drop me to that concrete floor, please. Я приближаюсь к концу моего свидетельства. I'm coming closer to the end of my testimony. Are you tired already? Be honest, please. Praise the Lord. Тогда я вам еще одну историю чудесно расскажу. And then I would love to share one more story. Мои дети часто собираются, и, и когда малые были, и когда сейчас большие приезжают в Санта-Барбару, все собираемся, всегда говорят, папа, одну историю с тюрьмы. Uh, my kids, when they were little, and when they grew up, and even up to today, when they come and visit us, they would always say, Daddy, tell us one story from your prison life. А я вам, как детям Божьим, сегодня расскажу две истории. But today, since you are the children of God, I will tell you two stories. <laughs> это тоже, это тоже знак моей любви к вам и знак любви к нашему Господу. This is a token of my love to you and to love, love for my Lord. Вы же пели, музыканты торжественно играли. Великий Бог, да, Бог наш великий и гениальный. Слава Ему. You sang and musician played that there is no like our God. Thank you, Jesus. Эта история, это было во второе мое заключение в лагере под Румынией. I served my second um, imprisonment in uh, close to the Romanian border. Работа очень страшная в том, что мы косили камыш по пояс в воде, и целый день нельзя было выходить, вода холодная. And I had a very rough labor, and it's like break, um, uh, back breaking labor, and my work was to cut down reeds in those muddy swampland um, around the island. Норма очень большая. And the um, Russian of uh, required norm was very 
uh, huge, impossible to fulfill. And a ration of food was very small, and I was exhausted, had no strength. Я очень заболел в один день, и высокая температура, я подняться уже со вторых на, не мог на работу. And one day I got really sick uh, with high fever, and at that day I could not just lift my body from that bed. А в наших концлагерях не выйти на работу, это равно новому сроку, новому большому преступлению. It was a big offense not to go to work. It was almost like getting another sentence for refusal to go to work or inability to go to work. При Сталине, когда не смогли люди выходить на работу, в конце дня зачитывались им как саботаж, измена родины, вывозили за лагерь и расстреливали. In Stalin's times, it was even worse that at the end of the day, in every prison, they would um, check the list of people that did not go to work and they would be taken out and exterminated by the end of the day. So I didn't go to work that morning, and I was in my barrack. And because it was an island, uh, our barracks were pretty much filled with cold water. And because we had, um, um, our beds were like um, two stories, um, we could actually survive by being on top. Uh, one of the prison guards said that uh, Bandarenko did not go to work today. And because these two officers came and knowing who I was, Большой ярости бросились к нарам, взяли за руки, за ноги и бросили в эту And with воду. anger, they just took me by hands and feet and threw me just into that cold, cold water. И начали в этой воде и грязи топтать своими ногами по мне. They were beating me with their huge boots in those water and beating me more. Ты отсюда никогда не выйдешь. And they promised me then that you will not come out of this time. Alive. You are an enemy of the state. You taught children and young children to believe. And then they left. Somehow I was able to get up. I was very wounded. I was all over in mud. And at that very moment, I had such a personal and close encounter with my Jesus that I had never had before or after. Я в моих ранах и страданиях увидел перед собою это Иисуса, стоящего в этой воде. I just saw Jesus standing right next to me. And I hear his voice in my heart. I am with you. His presence was so real that I was hugging his feet. And I was kissing his feet, saying, my teacher. Я не прошу у тебя свободы. I'm not asking you for freedom. Я готов за имя твое умирать здесь. I'm ready to die for your namesake. Но исцели меня, чтобы враги не смеялись, и я никогда не оставался от работы. And I ask you, Jesus, that you heal me that I would never be sick again, so those mockers of yours would not have a chance. But I had some really big problems with my um, feet since I was a little boy. And after this prayer, I was able to get up and I felt the warmth that filled my body 
from the bottom to the from the top from from the top to the bottom. Я почувствовал себя очень хорошо, здоровым. Я and here I felt начал... that I am healed. I am feeling good. And in that cold water, I'm starting to jump with joy. I'm I'm healed. I'm yours, Jesus, and you are my Savior, indeed. Понятно, как мужу, как главе семьи, мне было очень больно, что семья моя на свободе страдает без меня. As to a man, it was very hard for me to know that I'm behind bars, my family is out there, and there is nobody to protect them. Детей обижают. Не дают учиться где-то не в My kids were terrorized at school. They, their um, grades were lowered. Снова начались обыски. And although I was already behind bars, they continued interrogating my family. Начали терроризировать жену. They did searches in my house. They terrorized my wife. Смеялись над ней. And they mocked her and laughed at her. Как это такая молодая и будешь ждать его весь этот срок? And they even sarcastically told her, "Are you really going to wait your man for all of these years?" Ты глупая. You're stupid. Но я хочу сказать, что у меня жена самая сильная, мужественная, прекрасная и верная. But I would love to tell Слава you Богу. that my wife is the strongest, the most faithful, and most courageous woman that God gave me. She was in the front line. She took care of the family. She raised them. Скажу вам, что я как никогда почувствовал в жизни своей, что церковь была как одно тело. But I felt as never before that the body of Christ was like real one body. Все думали, все молились. Everybody in the body of Christ were praying, were sympathizing. И когда даже повредили мне глаза там на работе. And one time when I had a trauma to my eye in the prison labor camp. Желаю убить меня. Because they wanted to kill me. Я получил письмо. I received a letter. Когда одна сестра сказала, я готова отдать свой глаз. From one of a Christian lady who wrote to me that I am ready to give my eye to donate it to you, should you need it. Стоит удивляться и благодарить Господа за это счастье, знать, любить и поклоняться Господу большой христианской семьи. It is a real privilege and a real joy to have a family, the family of Christ, that we bring our joys and sorrows and share everything that life throws at us. Да, я не мог ничем помочь семье. Да, I я could знал, not help что... my family at the time. I could not be with them. Да, власть запрещала оказывать благотворительность и помогать особо семьям узников. And even authorities discourage believers and forbid them to help my family or those that were imprisoned. But our wonderful God had so many wonderful ways to find and help us. And there were so many wonderful people that God raised at that moment to support, help, and carry my family on His hands. Я искренне разделяю страданиям которые выпали на долю дорогого моего пастыря, брата моего, 
пастора Саида, который находится в иранской тюрьме. My heart aches, and I sincerely feel the pain that my dearest brother Saeed, Pastor Saeed, experiencing now in that cruel Iranian prison. And I pray diligently about him. I had never thought that I would see freedom. But God was able to deliver. And today I'm standing before you as a witness, before you and before the whole world. How wonderful and great and greatest our God is. And I believe. And I believe together with you, dear my, that freedom is going to come for my brother, Saeed. Amen. Дорогие мои братья, мужья, отцы, сыновья и сестры. My dearest brothers, husbands, brothers, and just young people, and also women. Считаю своим священным долгом перед Богом. Передать вам этот маленький, скромный опыт своей жизни и поощрить вас быть верными Богу во всякое время. I count it as my duty before God to share my experience and what God has done in my life and encourage you as believers to stand firm and to defend the truth. Мы ответственны за будущее наших семей. Мы ответственны за будущее поколения. Мы ответственны за наши семьи. We are responsible for our families. We are responsible for our churches. We are responsible for the future generation. Братья, будьте верны Богу и женам вашим и любите их my challenge to you, men, brothers, love your wife. Be faithful to them. Love them with all of your hearts. Бог даст вам трудных условиях, мудрости и силы во всем оставаться верными. And I know God will, God's grace is sufficient for you, and He will give you comfort and strength to stay faithful to Him in any given circumstance. Каждому из вас пусть Господь даст мудрость сделать правильный выбор. И те, может быть, которые есть среди нас, еще не сделали этот шаг. Откройте сердце для всесильному, любящему и спасающему Господу. And those of you that don't know Christ today, I urge you to open up your heart for most wonderful God and Savior who loves you dearly, and you have this chance today. Не идите по пути политической корректности и тоталитарности к греху. Make your right choice today, and do not pursue political correctness or tolerance to sin. Не сдавайте позиции, защищая Stay firm, defend the truth, and stand for the gospel. Не идите ни на какой компромисс и ни с кем. Do not ever, ever compromise your faith. Верю, что Бог вам, верю, что Бог вам даст силы быть верными, если вы будете и все мы будем 
послушны нашему Господу. I know from the word of God and from my own life that if we are obedient to him, he is able to sustain us. He is going to give us strength to be faithful. Дорогие мои, my dear ones, будем ценить Let's treasure этим драгоценным даром свободы, в которой мы живем. This treasure, this wonderful gift of freedom that we have today. Будьте настоящими мужчинами. I challenge you to be real men. Будьте настоящими воинами Христовыми. Real warriors for Christ. Будьте доблестными победителями. And display true valor in every sense of the word. Спасибо за внимание. And I would love to say thank you for your attention and Praise your patience. the Lord. God bless you. And God bless you.